7-0 for Liverpool. There is nobody who can say they saw this coming. There are even odds makers who didn't even have odds on a 7-0 win for Liverpool because nobody would have ever expected that. What did you make of it when you saw that scoreline as those goals just kept coming in? Well, I mean, ahead of this game, you know, I remember making a note just in preparation. What does that game uh, mean, right? Because everybody says, or, you know, who needs a win? Is it a must win? <clears throat> and I felt it was a must win for both because uh, for Liverpool, after Newcastle and, and Spurs uh, lost points earlier, <clears throat> it would have meant that win gets them closer for Manchester United. Uh, it kills whatever, you know, trophy aspirations they may have. And, you know, some will say, well, they were never in the right in, in the run for uh, 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 for the for the title in the Premier League. I thought they absolutely were. We've been here with that sort of momentum ahead of this game. They've won 18 out of 22 games in all competitions. They were on an incredible run like no other team in Europe. I mean, it was just absolutely incredible. Uh, uh, you know, it, and it came to fruition. It, it was unbelievable. Uh, Manchester United uh, were guilty of picking up a fight, uh, I, I think, and they were knocked down, I mean, or knocked out. Uh, I mean, it's as simple as that, because uh, this was one game where you can look at Manchester United and even Eric Ten Hag, because we've talked about how important it has been. Uh, tactical awareness uh, where they've made uh, a lot of mistakes, be it in a starting 11 or the lack of adjustments uh, at, at halftime. But the one thing that I look at is that uh, the mistake they've made is the lack of composure. Because you know what? With Liverpool, you can't get in a fight in a transitional game. At some stage, even conceding just before halftime, you have to look at possession of the ball. You have to take the momentum uh, uh that, that Liverpool can get if you allow them to do it. This was quite frankly embarrassing, but it happens to all the teams. Let's not forget Liverpool Football Club were just embarrassed by Real Madrid, you know, just a couple of weeks ago at Anfield. Uh, so, you know, it happens uh, to the best of them. But, but certainly um, this is something that, you know, Roy Keane was talking about hiding for months after something like this, you know, Unfortunately, that you know you can't hide that result because it was worst, worst result ever for Manchester United in the Premier League, and worst result ever against Manchester United. You know this is going to stay in history books uh, uh, for for decades now because I can't imagine that Manchester United are going to lose to Liverpool uh, by more than seven goals in the future. So that's something that players probably don't think about, but is going to be brought up time and time again against probably one opponent that Manchester United wouldn't have would want that record against. So what do you think went wrong? Because before the game, Eric Ten Hag had been saying that we will not be phased by the atmosphere at Anfield. And, you know, maybe he wasn't, but it does seem as though his players were in this game. Yes and no. I mean, think about it. I mean, first 15, 20 minutes, certainly it looked like it, it belonged to uh, uh, Liverpool, but I think that United settled. I mean, they had two or three chances. Uh, Liverpool scored in, what, 43rd, 44th uh, minute on the first shot on target. So it wasn't all that bad. It's as usual, the lack of concentration and the sort of... Uh, unusual goals they conceded right after halftime. I mean, when you concede in the first five minutes of the second half against Liverpool, uh, remember second goal, I think there was like four or five players uh, that could have had a play. It was a broken up play where everybody was missing tackle. You know, Luke Shaw, I think, made a, made a massive mistake uh, with his pass. But then uh, then I think, you know, it was a Varane, it was McTominay, it was uh, Casemiro kind of sort of a break, trying to break a tackle. And I think it was a resilience of Fabinho who just continued to fighting uh, for this ball and then right after that two goals third and fourth on an unbelievable breakaways and for a team like Manchester United who's so well organized and they've proven how good and how far they've come under uh, under Ten Hag is just incredibly unusual and and you know there's no explanation to that because one once it goes uh, uh backwards or so, you know sideways or certainly backwards in here there's there's really and no explanation other than the fact that they sort of quit in there. But it's so hard when you're at Anfield and you have that sort of a momentum. I mean, if this game was 10 minutes longer, that could have been eight, nine, maybe 10. It really could have been. So that's the unusual part. That's why Ten Hag has said that they lack professionalism, because we saw key players uh, uh, really give up. Yeah, he said he was surprised at how they didn't stick together. There's been a lot of criticism pointed towards Bruno Fernandes and his role or lack thereof, uh, his role as a leader. What did you make of his looking at him in that 
way rather than just the player. What did you make of his leadership skills on the day? Uh, okay. I mean, I, I think I've said on the show last week or the week before that I think he may be, you know, arguably the best buy in Manchester United's history. Uh, I, I'm not going to regret it because he's shown that. He's shown that at times when Manchester United were bad. When he came in, this was a different Manchester United. And I remember him playing in games where Manchester United were continuously losing, where the fans and everybody were against him, where Manchester United were at the lowest. So I'm not going to go back on that. I think he's tremendous. I was surprised and disappointed. You know, I, I see these videos that he was begging for substitution I don't know if that was begging. I mean, I saw that a little bit. He raised his arms in surprise that he wasn't coming off. Uh, uh, that in itself, if that's really what he was saying, it's unacceptable. That's for sure. I saw him quit. I don't know if you saw on the sidelines when Bajcetic went by him. He just gave up. He was beaten on the sideline and he just walked and 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 gave up. And, and um, I've been in those games. I haven't been proud of that. I'm sure he's not proud of it when he looks back. I think there's going to be a reaction from Ten Hag. I hope there's a reaction from Bruno Fernandes. I would be shocked if seeing and having a chance to think about it, if he didn't apologize for them. But, you know, I saw every leader on that team quit. I saw Luke Shaw at his worst. I saw Veran not at his best, an experienced player. I saw Casemiro that wasn't existent and certainly didn't show his uh, leadership qualities. When when things like that happen, we of, often ask a captain to act differently. And that's a fair point. But I, I just think this was a failure, starting with Eric Ten Hag and with every player on that pitch for Manchester United. So what's your feeling about what has to happen next? Because obviously there has to be a reaction from Manchester United. It's all been praise up until now under Eric Ten Hag, and it, rightfully so as well. They've got the Carabao Cup win under their belt. Is there a feeling that if they don't have a quick response to this one, it could derail their season? Or do you think that this is just pr going to prove to be a bump in the road for them? I think that this is going to be a bump in the road. I mean, they've dealt with setbacks pretty well. And I think Ten Hag almost, I mean, of course, he's not going to welcome that, but he's going to, um, he's going to look at this as a, you know, losing can be a great motivator, can it, right? And Ten Hag knew that this was going to come. Maybe not like this, 7-0, but he knew setbacks are going to come. They were on a tremendous run. You know, what goes up must come down. It, it never fails in life and, and 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 anywhere. And he probably felt that there's going to be moments, teaching moments, and that's certainly a big one. If you look at them, I mean, they're still, I mean, they've won a trophy already. Uh, a great season, probably not many expected. They're still in FA Cup, right? They still have a chance uh, to win a trophy in, in Europa League. They've had a difficult run. And, and again, I don't want this to be an excuse but I think that second half, if anything, shown because you know what you know, people say what happened in the second half, and and you can say that they they've given up, but I think they were physically and emotionally deflated against a team that that showed us glimpses of what Liverpool were about. This is not an easy opponent if you if you give him a chance, right? Uh, but think about it. I mean, in the last ten days, Manchester United had to play FA Cup against West Ham at Wembley, where they won a trophy, this game against Liverpool, and an, and a massive Barcelona game. This is in 10 days. I mean, it, it's not easy. It, I think when the avalanche came, they just didn't have it. They they probably, I would have to imagine that they try to dig deep, but it just fell apart for him. And from a player's standpoint, I understand to a certain degree. I don't want to excuse the 7-0. You still want to walk off and say, okay, 2-3-0, Sometimes it happens, maybe one or two nil, but but I can understand when you know when the air comes out of the balloon. It, it, it does happen to everyone. He he said tiredness can't be an excuse. Eric Ten Hag did, but does he have to say that? It is the fact that that will have actually played a factor in this. Is that what you're saying then? I think the emotional part. I think when it started to fell apart, it just it just hard because, as I said, this isn't a game that Liverpool that Manchester United should play. Nobody should play a wide open game against Liverpool. Just nobody, especially when everything cl clicks for them. So what what I think 
you know, in the second half, what he would have asked for is clear heads and a little bit of possession, just taking the air out of the ball, right? Even if they felt that the game was slipping away and, you know, a two or three nil, you still want to control the ball and just 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 have it and not allow Liverpool uh, to play in transition because, I mean, the whole game was in transition and, and that, that was their biggest mistake. Yeah, it's interesting, isn't it, to see what what do you think his punishment will be for them? Because we've seen him drop players and change things around, but he started the same eleven that he had in that final in the Carabao Cup. These are players that he's been able to trust this season. So, what type of punishment comes down after a result like this? I think none. I I really do. I mean, this team has grown so. F- so fast, almost at an incredible rate, right? He's pulled all the right uh, uh, strings. There'll be a stern talk and it should be very, very short. I think all players know how disappointed he is. They all understand what happened here. And I think I wouldn't let that linger too much. He's going to say say his piece, but I doubt that there's going to be any consequence, significant, significant, uh, significant consequence, right? Some people are asking for for Bruno Fernandes to to lose the the arm bent. I would be shocked if that happened. Now this may have to happen later on. You know, you can make the case that Casemiro is the one or should be the one, but I don't think that's going to happen. You've got to move on because the games are coming uh, thick and fast. And I don't think that he's going to let this linger. And, and you know, Ten Hag, very short, straight to the point. He's going to me- have a meeting. I would imagine that this meeting is going to be or should be five minutes long, no longer than that. And they're going to move on from that. OK, I'm going to give you a couple of numbers here, three and four, when it comes to Liverpool. Liverpool front three of Gakpo, Salah and Nunez. What do you think of this one going forward now? Change of guard. It almost felt a little bit like that, right? I mean, it, it, a lot remains to, you know, nobody's going to be getting excited. Uh, a freak result, as you said. It was freak. Uh, you know, where was this coming from, right? That sort of intensity that we've missed it. You thought after Real Madrid uh, loss, you're going to see that against Crystal Palace. It was a terrible, terrible bounce back. If you well, it wasn't a bounce back, but but reaction to that Real Madrid loss was absolutely terrible. And here we are against Manchester United. We of course understand understand it's a massive, uh, massive uh, uh, rivalry for for them. But yeah, like Sadio Mane, right? I mean, old Bobby Fir- Firmino. Uh, you know, you, you look at that and you say, you you kind of always think, my man, how good it was. And then all of a sudden. You know, you have Darwin Nunez, uh, the nearly man, as some call him, uh, you know, scoring consistently. Gakpo coming in and, and fi- you know, showing uh, how good he is. And even Bobby Firmino coming in. But, yeah, the story was also about Mo Salah because he was arguably the best. I, I have a hard time choosing between him and Gakpo because I thought Gakpo was absolutely outstanding. But I think, you know, it's something that at least will put away the notion that Liverpool have finished, that Jurgen Klopp can manage. It gives them something, obviously trying to get into top four, which they have a great opportunity to now with a game in hand. Uh, So it's there. It's there. It's just been inconsistent and they couldn't find it in such way. That's my next and my last question. The next number was for how can you bet against the Liverpool side that we've just seen like this now finishing in the top four, given the experience that they have, over the recent seasons under Jurgen Klopp, given the fact there's three points now outside of the top four, they've got a game in hand on Spurs who are up there. How would you bet against them? Would you bet against them finishing top four? Uh, I mean, I, I need to see confirmation as always. I mean, this is a one-off. This is Manchester United. You get up for that game. I still remember the Crystal Palace game. What, uh, you know, uh, the encouragement comes from from the front three. But most importantly, maybe... You know, we shouldn't talk about the front three because we knew it was in them. But look what's happening in the back, right? I mean, this is five Premier League games without conceding. As we've said, if Konate is healthy, he's an excellent player. We saw the partnership between Konate and Van Dijk at their best. And now that they're coming back, this is very, very significant. Allison, of course, is always good. So I think defensively, you're going to get the midfield was good. Again, good move by... Uh, by Jurgen Klopp with Elliot. That was questioned, of course, because the young Bicetic uh, was playing very well. 
I've always said that you're going to get a game like this from Henderson, but I don't think you can count on Henderson to have this sort of game week in and week out again. Fabinho was a little bit better, but still not enough for me to say that Liverpool are going to replicate this sort of atmosphere week in and week out. The next game is away to Bournemouth. We've seen Bournemouth, how desperate and how good they are against Arsenal, even though they came up short. So, uh, no, not there yet. It's a great not opportunity. There yet. Great but if you had, all right, but, but if you had it, to decide today, if you had to decide the fourth place today at the end of the season, who would you say? I would say Liverpool because I'd say that it would be criminal not to take advantage of this opportunity. First terrible game against Crystal Palace, which would have put him even closer uh, to that, and second, of course, the sort of performance that they've had, uh, you know. Uh, uh, not second lease on life, but the fact that both Spurs and Newcastle won and they've beaten Manchester United 7-0. If you don't take advantage of this, if you're Liverpool, then you don't deserve the Champions League. Now, obviously, it can change on a weekly basis, so I want a yes or a no as we end the show. Arsenal title winners this year? Not there yet. Not there yet. Or Liverpool huh? top four then. That's a yes, isn't Liverpool it? Liverpool top four, yes. All right. Well, we'll see you next week to see if Janusz can change his mind again. Thank you very much for watching ESPN FC on YouTube. For more highlights, analysis and exclusive content, be sure to subscribe.